Hi, I'm Jonathan Bowder with Seagate Technology. I'm a product manager for Live Mobile. Today I'm going to show you what you get when you sign up for data transfer as a service with Seagate in our Live Mobile array. First, it ships to you in a military grade Pelican case. Because it's waterproof, we have a pressure release valve up here so that you can get it open in case of atmospheric changes. Inside, we have laser cut foams for all of the accessories which you see here on the table and we'll go through them shortly. So it protects our device no matter where and how it's shipped. First out of the box, we have our quick start guide and support reference. These allow you to get fully set up and running and have links to our full user manual online and any software needed for deployment. Next, we have our power cables. Since your project may involve international locations, we have power supply cables to be able to power up the device in any region. We include all the cables needed to connect this device to your host. First, in maximum performance, we have the Thunderbolt 3 cable. This gives you greatest throughput with 2.8 gigabytes per second transfer rates to really take advantage of our mobile array. Next, we have our USB-C to C cable. This gives you great flexibility in the data center, allows you up to 900 megabytes a second transfer rate. And then lastly, we have our C to A cable, which gives you flexibility of backwards compatibility to USB 3.0. And the coolest accessory we include is magnetic nameplates. Since our mobile arrays all look alike and you may have multiple of them deployed on your project, you can easily label your device so that you can tell them apart. Now I want to introduce you to the star of our data transfer as a service, the Live Mobile Array. This is a portable, rackable, secure device that allows you flexibility for any environment. The Mobile Array is designed to be portable for easy field use. You can carry it around. It's rack mountable for data center use. On your computer local host, it's a DAS. In your data center, in the rack, you can connect it via SAS, Fiber, or iSCSI. Now for the physical features of the mobile array, we're going to start at the front with the handle for easy portability of our rugged device. We have a QR code for fleet management, easily tracking all of your devices. The front is not only stylish, but the venting allows for airflow from the front to the back to keep all the drives cool. And then we have a status light, which we will touch on later. Now we're going to show you the back of the drive where all the fun stuff happens. And we're going to go through the ports on the back that allows you to connect this to your host computer or in your data center. First, we have our Thunderbolt 3 port. This is for maximum throughput. We have our Thunderbolt 3 peripheral port, so you can daisy chain, connect other devices. In the middle, we have our Live USM port. This is a PCIe Gen 3 port that allows that six gigabits per second data center performance when it's connected to our rack mount receiver. Then we have our actual power connector and our power button, which will give you on or off power control in the field. And then finally, on the bottom of the mobile array, there's a couple features I'd like to point out. The groove here is for sliding into our rack mount receiver in the data center. The rubber feet are to provide stackability vibration dampening, and non-slip. And then lastly, we have our label here for when you need to return your device. Everything you need to know is on here, including the serial number. Now we're going to go through connecting the live mobile array to your computer and then unlocking it with our live client software. First, we have to plug in our power adapter. Now this covers our live USM port and has locking screws so that we don't lose connection in the field, even if your device moves around a little bit. Now today we're going to connect this to my computer with Thunderbolt 3. So I have my Thunderbolt 3 cable here. I'm going to put it in the host port. And now we're ready to turn it on. All right. Now we're fully connected. And you can see our status light on the front. The current amber color means that the device has been detected and is ready to be unlocked. When it is fully unlocked, it will move to green letting you know that your device is ready to go. When your project is set up, you will receive an email with two links. The first link will take you to the live management portal where you create your username and password for your device. The second link, you will need to download the live client software so you can unlock and mount to your desktop. Now, 
Before we actually unlock the device, I want to talk about a few more of our security features. In our current lock state, you can see the device is, is, is not ready to be accessed. It's encrypted using AES 256-bit encryption based on our Seagate SED technology. The self-encrypting drives is what powers our security features for this and allows not only for encryption in travel and at rest, but also our crypto erase feature. In addition, we have physical security features, tamper evidence seals, tamper resistant screws that protect your data in motion. To unlock your connected live mobile array, you will need to open and sign into the live client software. This software can be downloaded from the Seagate website or with a link from the user invitation email you received as part of your live portal setup. Unlocking requires two-factor authentication. First, input your username and password that was created on the live management portal, then confirm your user access with the use of an authenticator like Microsoft Authenticator or Google Authenticator. Once unlocked, the device settings and details can be accessed by clicking on the Inspect button. The inspection page will give you details on the drive and RAID status. In the Disk Group section, the Info button will provide current RAID status, and the Function dropdown will allow editing or deletion of the existing RAID. Clicking on the Edit Disk Group button will allow you to see individual disk status as well as overall RAID status. In the section marked LED, you can identify the unit being managed. Clicking on this button will turn the front LED purple so you can quickly pick out the device if you have multiple units deployed for your project. Clicking it again turns it back to green. Inside the Edit LED section, the indicator can be turned on or off, and there is a color legend for reference. Tags can be used to further describe the device for project sorting and cataloging. Device settings is where you can find the crypto erase feature. This quickly and completely erases the mobile array for data security at the end of your project or before using the device on another project. At the end of the erase process, a certificate of crypto erase completion can be generated and saved for proof of data destruction. It can be saved out as a PDF for your files for later use. To create a new RAID or change from the standard RAID 5 configuration, go to the disk group section. First, you will need to delete the current RAID once deleted and the device is rediscovered, go back to the disk group section and click on create disk group. Then using the wizard, choose the drives you wish to configure and the RAID mode you wish to end up with. You can name your volume and then choose your format type and click create to finish the RAID setup. Now that the RAID build is complete, your device is ready to go again for new data or project management. Enjoy. Thank you for watching.